I feel like we've been talking about this same story in different ways over the past, you know, decade or so. There's always this great big rolling ball of, 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 of debt, of losses when it comes to the Chinese economy. And the question is always, where does that land? And you say ordinary households will eventually have to bear the brunt. Yeah, I think the, uh, it's like uh, uh, other East Asian countries, like uh, like Japan, uh, and uh, you, you, the countries uh, have uh, China has a very high savings rate uh, and also fixed exchange rate. So it, it's a kind of a, 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 a you can pass the cost on to, to savers through uh, inflation uh, because the people really have nowhere no, nowhere to go. And, and, and therein lies the problem, right? Because when you've got a, a closed system, there's very limited options in terms of where and how households can generate wealth. So what does that mean for wealth creation in China when the property market is losing confidence, when the equity market is losing confidence and where there are capital controls? So what else can they do? Well, I think that uh, you look at the experience of Japan. Uh, you know, the uh, it, it, it was, uh, the process was about uh, developing the country, building up the country. So uh, the money, really, one way or another, has to go to where the government wants it to. Like now, the government wants to build these big infrastructure projects uh, to boost uh, both the economy and the competitiveness. And uh, these big projects are not going to be uh, have high returns. So, uh, so overall, you look at the economy, uh, it's, it's just uh, uh, you are not going to have a high return. So uh, uh, from time to time, you have financial bubbles that give you uh, high returns. But eventually, everything comes, comes back to, to land on the ground. And uh, I think the people uh, in China uh, cannot get very rich. That, that, I think that that... that probably uh, is okay with the government. Actually, the government is, ha is, is, uh, is happy with it. Andy, and of course, there's been more uncertainty given the regulatory crackdown that we've seen across China as well. Breaking right now, we heard from Alibaba that they will be applying for primary stock listing in Hong Kong. A dual primary, of course, they have uh, the stock listed at the NICE as well. What are the implications of this for the financial markets? Well, I think that uh, there will be supply issue. I think if the stock is already listed over there, it's just uh, there will be more supply. And the government, uh, you know, the financial decoupling between the United States and China is inevitable. Uh, and the, China, the Chinese government, the government is doing the first, just uh, to to, uh, to avoid uh, the shock that would come eventually. So uh, I think the uh, overall for the market, it's, it's, uh, and I think it's bearish. It's oversupply. Do you see more of these moves coming for other Chinese companies as well? I, I think overall, uh, especially tech companies, uh, all need to delist. That, that's, uh, I, my, my, uh, that, that's my view. The Chinese government has decided that decoupling is inevitable. Why don't we do it now? Andy, what does this mean for Ant Financial? Because it feels like the trend towards dual listings, like the coming home, is perhaps an effort by some of these giants that have been in the bad books, that have been suffering under the re regulatory crackdown, to try and align themselves closer to what the party wants. Oh, I, I, yeah, I think that uh, now they understand that, but uh, it's not their choice to make. Uh, I think that the Chinese government is asserting, has been asserting control over over finance, over capital markets, uh, and they, they think that these guys are listed in New York, uh, and uh, you, it's very hard to uh, to understand what they're doing over there. Uh, it's not good for, for, for the government. So uh, there are a lot of reasons for this to happen. They must come in, uh, and uh, they must uh, uh, be, uh, uh, obey the, the, the Chinese government. Uh, just yesterday, we were talking about this uh, big story on the Bloomberg about youth unemployment and uh, the really falling expectations from young people, the 15 million young people unemployed. Uh, how big of a concern is the broader state of the Chinese economy when it comes to, of course, the party congress that we have later this year? The, the, the economy depends on uh, exports. Exports are still rising at a double-digit rate. Such a high base of three and a half trillion U.S. dollars. 
And I think that uh, uh, the domestic demand is, is pretty sluggish because of a zero COVID policy. That's pretty obvious. And also for, for youth unemployment, it's really uh, about expectation. China has a labor shortage because of the labor force shrinking. Uh, the, uh, I think the issue is that uh, uh, a lot of uh, graduates were getting high salaries in bubbles like a shadow banking system uh, or this internet sector. Now these, uh, these areas have have uh, really come back to earth. So that's why I think a lot of people are disappointed. They keep searching for high salaries. It's just, they are just not there. Andy, we're looking ahead to the Politburo meeting, which is expected to take place at the end of the month. What are your expectations in terms of economic and stimulus policy? What options remain to policymakers, given that there are so many elements to the slowdown that are structural uh, and perhaps can't be addressed productively by the usual playbooks? Yeah, I think that I, I, I don't think the government will do a lot. They will do some. Uh, I think there is a general acceptance of uh, slow growth in the coming years. So it's not like uh, the government wants to do everything possible to achieve high growth uh, like we saw before. Uh, what I see is uh, 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 these big infrastructure projects, like uh, uh, like a regional integration. Uh, the, the cities, uh, the small cities that uh, don't have a lot of demand for properties, they're trying to integrate these cities to the, the, the tier one cities. So hopefully that uh, it will boost the property demand, also boost the uh, uh, efficiency. So that, that I think that's a, a good idea in my view, uh, even though. Uh, that cannot achieve all its purposes. Uh, and then there's the, uh, the, the, the case for tidying up the property sector. All these uh, buildings are not, not un, uh, unfinished. Pump some money there to finish them so we don't have uh, waste. Other than that, I, I don't see a lot, uh, mm. a lot more to come.